today. I want to just welcome everybody. I'm glad my friend Isaac showed up today. Uh, and it's awesome that he's here, and I'm glad everybody's here that's supposed to be here today. Uh, I'm going to be studying, we're going to be studying together about grace uh, this beautiful Sabbath morning. Now, this is a very wide and important subject, therefore I, was, I would be able to share just, just a part of it. But before we get started, let us, let us pray so God can be with us. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful Sabbath day. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to be with us now, to fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can understand your word and apply it to our lives. We thank you for this in Jesus' holy and most precious name. Amen. So this is a very, uh, grace is a very wide and important subject. Therefore, I would be able to share, just like I said, just a small part of it. There are a number of books in the Bible that we can use to study about grace. So we'll be, so we'll be using the scriptures in Ephesians, Corinthians, and Matthew, and some others. Uh, so I will read several texts first so that we can understand uh, the subject, our subject about grace. So let's start by turning to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 2 and 4. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. So Paul Paul always starts out with grace, and he always ends with grace in his, in his books. It says, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So, and then let's go to verse 7. For it says, In whom we have redemption, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. So how do we have our sins forgiven? It is through the riches of God's grace we have our sins forgiven. So in Ephesians, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, Verses 7 through 8. Now, this was our scripture reading, uh, verse 7, Ephesians chapter 2, 2, verse 7 through 8. It says in verse 7, that in the ages to come, we might sh- he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and all kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. So throughout eternity, we're going to be studying about God's grace. So, so that's why it's such a wide subject, such a big subject. For grace you are saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So grace is so big that it's hard to put a definition on it. The best way to understand it is by putting it in stories to show how it works in action. Do you know how you can tell if you understand what grace is? It is the way you treat someone who needs grace. Let's turn to Ephesians. It's just chapter over. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7. What made Paul a minister? Now, Paul, on the road to Damascus, he was slain in the spirit. And the interpretation of being slain in the spirit, he was knocked off his horse. God conquered him. God wants to conquer us in our life. And so what made Paul a minister? It says here, wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of of grace, to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of his power. So that's what made Paul a minister was the grace of God. God, Paul was, you know, Paul was 
was a pretty bad person at one time where he was killing the Christians. The best way to understand it, okay, so, all right, got a little mixed up there. But, so Paul was made a minister by the grace of God. Grace has something that you receive as a gift and you cannot pay for. If you receive grace, Jesus says, freely give. So let's turn to Matthew, Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, and we'll start at verse, verse 7. Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8. It says in verse 7, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received freely give. God gives us the power to do these things, but he wants, he's waiting on us to, so in order for us to receive the power of the Holy Spirit, because we, he doesn't want us to misplace that power. So, so all, and we all, let's see, yes, we all need to be forgiven. Let us remember on Ephesians chapter 6. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. 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 It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. So our, our fight is not against each other. We need to forgive one another. We need to continue to love one another. Our fight is not against each other. So Peter asked Paul a question about forgiving. He wanted to know how long and how many times should he forgive someone. Where can he draw the line? Some of the rabbis thought that two or three times was enough in forgiving somebody. But Peter knew Jesus, and he saw how he treated per people with courtesy, politeness, and kindness. And these were the people that were considered the worst sinners around. Jesus was always getting into trouble with the Jewish leaders because he was trying to save these people and as well as trying to save the Jewish leaders. As Christians, we must be like Jesus. Christian means Christ, means Christ. Christian means Christ-like. We are saved to serve others. Jesus died while we were yet sinners. So Peter watched, and he knew that two or three times just was not enough. Jesus says, seven times 70, forgive which means that we should always to forgive one another. When Jesus was on the cross, the prayer that the prayer that he said took on was for the whole world. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. A lot of times we do stuff. When we sin against God, we crucify him afresh. So, and Jesus is up in heaven always praying for us. He loves us. He cares for us. So let us go to this story, which I'm talking about, uh, Matthew 18. Let's go to Matthew 18. Matthew 18, verses 21 to 25. And the story goes, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how, oft, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say unto you, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servant. 
And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. Now, 10,000 talents was a lot of money back in those days. That was a lot of money. For as much as he, he had... For as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and his children and all that he had, the, and the payment was to be made. And therefore the servant fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But that same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, who, which owed him a hundred pence. Now, that was a payable debt. A hundred pence is a lot smaller than 10,000 talents. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat after he had been forgiven. Pay me that what thou owest. And the servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not. But went out and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants and uh, were then his fellow servants saw what was done, and they were very sorry, and came and told him told their Lord about what was done. And the Lord, after that, he had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, forgive thee. I forgave thee of all thy debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on you? And the Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that he had done that was due unto him. And likewise shall my heavenly Father do unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. So God wants us to be a forgiving people. God has forgiven us. He has saved us by his grace. Now, in, in the book, Christ Object Lessons, it talks about not, not for us to misapply Christ's teachings. There is a, a just obligation. There is a moral uh, bound. You're morally bound to pay your debts. There, we can't be lazy. It's talk, this scripture is talking about unavoidable poverty where people really can't pay back. At the same time, it says in Christ's Object Lessons, a working man should not support others in their idleness. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, it says, if we do not work, neither shall we eat. Now, it's important that those that borrow and they have these faults, they must correct these faults of being lazy or, or, or not fulfilling their obligation. If they do not correct these faults, all that we have done for them is like putting treasure into a bag with holes in it. Grace is needed for people that make mistakes, like you and I. The angels in heaven don't need grace because they don't make mistakes. Have you ever given up a bad habit? I know I have. And, and I still giving up bad habits. Uh, in my marriage with my wife, uh, there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to unlearn. So I'm still giving up bad habits, trying to, to make her happy. <laughs> so it's hard to do. Sometimes we bring people to the church and we don't give them enough grace. We think that they should already overcome that certain habit. And so they end up leaving the church because we didn't give them enough grace. So it's important to be graceful to one another. God is coming back soon, and we have to stay ready and be prepared. Now, I'm going to share with you a story about two, these two drunks. 
these two drunks were, were walking home and, and one drunk says to the other, uh, why don't you come home to, to my home? My wife will get up and make a meal for us and it, it'll be awesome. And this guy says, there ain't no way your wife's gonna do that. And he's, but he agrees, he says, okay, let's go see. He, he was thinking that his wife was gonna get up and get a frying pan and hit this guy. And so he wanted to see that. And so, and so, so they go home and he goes in there and he tells his wife, he says, wife, get up, my friend is here. And it was, it was late, they were intoxicated, it was late. His, his wife gets up, starts cooking a meal and starts weighing on them hand and foot. And this man was amazed. He was like, what's going on? And she was weighing on them hand and foot, cleaned up their mess after they were done. And he was just amazed at seeing this lady do this for them at this hour, wee hours in the morning, but, and them being intoxicated. And so the man, the man, the wife's husband went to go to the restroom or something, and, and he had a chance to talk to the lady. And he goes, uh, ma'am, why would you do this for us? This is amazing that you do this for us. And she goes, she tells him, because I'm a Christian, and I'm going to be enjoying eternal life throughout the ages, and God is it's going to be great for me. And she, and she says, and you're not. You're not going to heaven like I am. So I want to be as graceful as I can to you because this is all you're going to get. Yeah, this is all you're going to get. And that man thought about it. And, and he went home that night and he gave his life to God. He rededicated his life to God. And that man's a Christian today because of that lady was, be, was so graceful. And, and so we have to be graceful. So uh, now the story, let me, so like I said, in story form is, is very important. So the story of Jacob, the reason why Jacob's family got into such a mess is because of sin. Now Jacob's father had one wife, and Jacob knew he should have one wife as well, but he had four. Now you can imagine, husbands, how much trouble that would be. Now we're talking about Jacob's sons. He had 12 sons. And we were just talking about it this morning in Sabbath school. And um, Jacob had 12 sons. And there was an incident uh, of Dinah in, in Genesis chapter 34. One of Jacob's daughters, she was brought to shame and sorrow by Shechem, the Hivite prince. She was violated. Now, Jacob's sons were not the, not the sit-by-the-campfire type of boys. These boys were some rough customers. And Simeon and Levi were involved in the guilt of murder. Uh, and the whole city had been given to ruin and slaughter in retaliation. But these boys, this man was sorry that he did that to Dinah, and he wanted to make amends, and he wanted to marry her. And so they, he made a, a pact with, uh, with, the, with Jacob and the boys, and says, I'll marry her, then your wives can marry our husbands, and, and so forth. And, and, and exchange, and they said, oh yeah, okay, let's do that. that. That's a great idea. And so, but they said, but there's, there's one catch. You have, all have to be circumcised. All your men have to be circumcised. So you can read it in Genesis chapter 34. So after the third day, after all the men were circumcised, Levi and Simeon went in there and slew the whole city, slew the whole, all the men, and then when they were hurting, killed them. And that's when, the, and then the city was pillaged and they took their wives and their children and all that. And that was done in retaliation. But God healed Jacob's sons. And through another story that we're talking about this morning, God healed Jacob's sons. And he had to heal them through their brother Joseph when they sold Joseph to Egypt, where Joseph put them through trials and tribulation where he wanted to see where their hearts were at. 
and, and where they said, well, we don't want our father to die. We, 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 got, we need Benj my father needs Benjamin. And so I, I'll stay in Benjamin's place. And they all wanted to stay in Benjamin's place just to send Benjamin home to their father. They didn't want their father to suffer anymore. So God healed Jacob's sons. And that was the grace that healed them. Now, in conclusion, grace is a gift from God. And being generous, we must be generous to others through love and mercy, even if we feel they don't deserve it. We need grace with our spouses. We need grace with our children. We need grace with the people we work with. And we need grace when we are trying to lead people to Christ. And another thing, people need grace more than one time. We need grace throughout our lifetime. So let us give grace. The Lord is coming back soon. So I just want to tell everybody, share with everybody, press on. You're going to make it. Keep your eyes on Jesus, our perfect example. Let us be Christ-like. So let us pray. Thank you, Father, for your saving grace that we're going to be studying about throughout, e throughout eternity. We ask you, Lord, to please forgive us of our sins and fill us with the Holy Spirit in which we need to be saved. Bless your people here, Lord God. Bless them, guide them, and protect them. Bless us all, Lord, we pray and thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen.